While randomly browsing YouTube one day, I stumbled across a newly released cinematic trailer for Shadow Gambit, The Cursed Crew. The trailer immediately piqued my interest. It had really cool, unique character designs, a great art style, a captivating theme, a focus on stealth, and as a film student, I especially appreciated the energetic camera work and excellent direction. All of that was great, but what truly sold me was a section of the trailer where the crew stops and formulates a plan before then showing each member executing their part in the synchronized elimination of their targets. While I hadn't seen any gameplay at this point, I had already been sold on the core concept of the game. The idea of planning out and performing an elaborate sequence of actions with multiple characters to stealthily eliminate a group of guards is intrinsically awesome, and seeing brief snippets of gameplay at the end of the trailer was enough to get me to imagine how such an event might play out in actual gameplay. So being wholeheartedly sold on the game, I rushed to Steam and added it to my wishlist, where it remains to this day. Yeah, that's right, we aren't actually talking about Shadow Gambit, as, at the time of recording, it isn't out yet. There's only a few weeks left until its release, and I am eagerly looking forward to jumping into it, but today, I'm here to talk about what happened next. After wishlisting Shadow Gambit, I was curious if the developer Me 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 had made any other games in this style, and so I clicked through to their developer page, and sure enough, they had. Shadow Tactics in 2016, and Desperados 3 in 2020. I proceeded to pick up both the titles, and now, nearly five months later, I finished them. To say that these games blew me away would be a gargantuan understatement that would in no way properly express how taken aback I was by just how much I loved these games. If you'll indulge me, I'd like nothing more than to tell you about what very well may be the best video games I have ever played. Okay, so to give you a basic overview of these games, they place you in control of a group of one to five characters, each with their own abilities. You use these characters to sneak through increasingly elaborate mission layouts as you progress through a linear story. When first looking into these games, I loved the concept, but I had my doubts about how controlling five characters simultaneously would actually work. Bad controls could easily kill a game like this. Unfortunately, the control scheme is remarkably intuitive. Sure, it'll take a second to get used to, and control clicking to interact with objects is initially really weird, but it all becomes natural in no time. Additionally, the pressure of needing to rapidly use keybinds is alleviated by shadow mode, or showdown mode depending on the game, which allows you to pre-plan actions for each character. Using this mode to pull off meticulous schemes perfectly fulfills the potential advertised in the Shadow Gambit trailer, and offers some of the coolest moments in these games. Scratch one. Everything feels extremely responsive, and the characters will almost always do exactly what you want them to. One of the most remarkable things to me about these games is that they manage to avoid almost all the classic pitfalls of the stealth genre. I love stealth games, I always have. There's just something alluring about being a blade in the shadows. But the games in this genre, at least for me, tend to have one of two main pitfalls. Either the game is extremely restrictive, allowing you almost no room to get creative with your approach. For example, I loved both Plague Tale Innocence and Requiem, but the stealth in both titles is pretty rigid. Due to your limited toolkit as Amesia, there's only so many ways to sneak past guards which can result in stealth getting repetitive. The second pitfall is when the game gives you copious amounts of freedom and allows for tons of creativity, but in so doing nullifies its own sandbox by making the game ridiculously easy. Probably the best example of this would be Dishonored. While it is my favorite game ever made, it lacks almost any challenge. Finding ridiculous ways to kill guards is intrinsically satisfying, but you never need to get creative. You can just blink behind someone, stab them, then blink away, and that method alone will just about get you through the entire game. Both Shadow Tactics and Desperados 3 are extraordinarily impressive because they give you an insane amount of freedom, but it never comes at the cost of challenge. There are dozens of ways to overcome most situations by combining different character abilities, but it almost never comes easy. It is a testament to the brilliant level and system design that these games manage to deliver both countless opportunities and compelling challenges at the same time, as that is a feat that very, very few stealth games manage to achieve. Trust me, I've played a lot of them. Yet another way these games avoid pitfalls of the genre is through their clarity. Most stealth games operate on some level of vagary. What the exact rules are on when a guard can see you and how he'll react if he does are very often obscured, which can lead to many frustrating moments. The Mimi Me games completely sidestep this issue by giving the player all the information they could ever require. Where exactly is this guard looking? How much noise will throwing this bomb make? And how will guards react to seeing footprints? 
All of these questions have exact answers. The games are very upfront with their rules, which gives the player the power to play around them. The game also behaves consistently, so if your plan goes wrong, it's because you overlooked something, not because the game didn't give you all the information required. There are numerous concessions to reality for the sake of gameplay and readability. Realistically, this guy should be able to see me, but because I'm not in his view cone, he is clueless. My characters shouldn't be able to see the entire map, and these guards follow extremely rigid patrol patterns. While any of these things could be tallied up as a negative that detracts from immersion, I would argue that in fact, these choices increase the clarity of the game and subsequently vastly improve the experience of playing it. Sure, it would be more realistic if the guards had randomized patrol routes, but if they did, then you couldn't formalize plans that utilize and manipulate those routes, which would make the game a lot worse. Another glaringly unrealistic feature is that running makes no noise. You can sprint back and forth directly behind an enemy and they won't hear a thing. This is unrealistic and more than a little silly, but once again, it enhances the act of playing the game. Instead of worrying about making noise on your approach, you can instead focus on executing your plans with deadly speed. The point is that these games have an extremely clear vision of what they want to be, and every choice made supports that vision. Something I value very highly in games is replayability, and man do these games deliver in troves. These levels are immediately fun to replay because there are so many possible ways to solve each problem that no two playthroughs will be the same. Additionally, the games have special challenges to encourage the player to revisit a mission adhering to new constraints like don't touch the water or don't use a disguise. These challenge runs force you to get creative and devise new ways of outwitting your opponents. Desperados 3 also has Baron challenges, which have you play through remix levels with different characters. So not only are the levels designed in a way that makes them inherently fun to replay, but the game also encourages you to return to these levels and play them in new ways, which is something I just love. I admittedly have yet to do most of these, but it's something I am very much looking forward to. Except for the speedrun medals, those kind of scare me. I'll get back to you on whether I love or hate them. One thing I've yet to touch on is the unique perspective that these games have you sneaking around from. Where most stealth games are either first or third person, Shadow Tactics and Desperados 3 are instead isometric. While this might seem like a new idea, this style of game can be traced all the way back to Commandos in 1998. The genre, formerly known as Real Time Tactics, which Me 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 is now renaming to Stealth Strategy, which is a way better name by the way, received many different entries, including four Commandos games, three Desperados games, games and a few other spin-offs. Sadly, the genre died off many years ago until Mimi Me resurrected it in 2016 with Shadow Tactics. I've gone back and played some of the original games in this genre, and I have to say, it is staggering just how much the devs at Mimi Me managed to improve on the games that inspired them. They took what worked and doubled down on it while axing all the negatives. They didn't just revitalize a forgotten genre. I'd argue they reinvented it and improved on it in every conceivable way. I have a great deal of respect for the other games in this genre, but they don't hold a candle to the Mimi Me games, at least to me. All in all, the gameplay in both Shadow Tactics and Desperados 3 is phenomenal. They feel amazing to control, have great level design that allows for tons of player freedom while maintaining a consistent challenge, they have extremely clear rule sets that empower the player, perfectly deliver on the core fantasy they are striving for, and on top of all of that, have extremely replayable missions. The gameplay is undoubtedly the core selling point of these games, but it is far from the only one. Obviously, you figured out that these games look fantastic by now, but they also have amazing soundtracks. The main themes of both Shadow Tactics and Desperados 3 are seared into my brain, and the ambient tracks that play in each mission do a great job of setting the mood. And surprisingly enough, the stories in both games are actually really good. Now, the plots themselves are pretty basic and very predictable, but what makes them a highlight of the experience is the characters, as they bounce off each other in really entertaining ways. My favorite dynamics from each game have to be Takuma and Yuki from Shadow Tactics and Isabelle and Doc McCoy from Desperados 3. I won't go into detail on the stories to avoid spoilers, but just know that while they likely aren't going to win any awards, they are very charming and greatly enhance the gameplay. Now, while I've been praising these games to the high heavens, that doesn't mean that they're perfect. And in the interest of fairness, let's briefly touch on some of the negative aspects of these games. For one, dropping bodies off cliffs is incredibly finicky, and it often takes a second before the game decides to let you do it. Additionally, Desperados 3 introduced a lot of quality of life features, such as being able to speed up time, being able to tie up unconscious enemies, and making it so characters can automatically climb ladders and make jumps. But none of these features are in Shadow Tactics, which can make it feel worse by comparison. Oh, and in Desperados 3, tied up guards can be used to lure ponchos away from their post. The thing is, ponchos normally never leave their posts, and that's kind of like an integral part of the game's challenge. So 
as you might imagine, being able to lure ponchos away really easily completely breaks the game. Fortunately, you don't have to use this cheesy strat. I've never used it in my time playing the game, and I've already beaten it on the hardest difficulty, so it's very easy to just ignore this poorly balanced mechanic for the sake of a better experience. To be honest, those are extremely minor issues, but I do actually have one major issue with Desperados 3 in particular. They made a choice at the end of the final DLC mission that completely ruined one of the best characters in the game. Again, I won't go into detail to avoid spoilers, but it is a huge blemish on an otherwise great story. Even then, it's quite literally the last cutscene in the game, so I just kind of pretend like it never happened. But yeah, those are really all the negatives I can think of, and I don't know if you noticed, but those aren't really hard-hitting criticisms. In conclusion, I consider Shadow Tactics and Desperados 3 to be the best games I have ever played. Not just because I've had an amazing time playing them and I've fallen head over heels in love with them, but also because they near flawlessly achieve everything they set out to do. They successfully revitalized a dead genre and created what are easily the most compelling scenarios I have ever had the pleasure of sneaking through. And they managed to tell good stories with great characters along the way, all while being set in beautiful worlds. I am eagerly anticipating the release of Shadow Gambit, and I fully suspect it will become my favorite of the three, due to the more magical abilities and a theme that is way more up my alley. Despite my gushing over these games, the themes of Japan and Wild West don't really do anything for me, like, at all. Anyway, I hope that Mimimi continues to elevate this genre for years to come. I'd love a medieval-themed self-strategy game, and I know it'll never happen, but if they did one set in the Assassin's Creed universe, I, I would lose my mind. <laughs> But as long as Mimi Me keeps making masterpieces like Shadow Tactics and Desperados 3, I will be there to buy them day one every time. Now, this is the part of the video where I'd normally tell you to go out and buy the games right now, but I won't be doing that. The reality is that these games are very niche, and they are not for everybody. They require lots of patience and the right mindset. If these games click with you, by God will they click with you. But how much you enjoy these games is largely going to come down to what type of person you are and what you want out of games. Fortunately, the people over at Mimi Me continue to be incredible as they actually have demos available for both games, so you don't have to guess blindly at whether you'll like them or not. You can simply test them out and decide for yourself. I would implore each and every one of you to at least give one of the demos a shot. It costs nothing, and if you end up liking the games half as much as I do, you'll have a great time. Before I end the video, I want to pay one last compliment to the devs. Earlier, I said that it took me five months to beat Shadow Tactics and Desperados 3. For me, that is highly unusual. I tend to blast through games really fast, but I actively stop myself from binging these games because I wanted to savor every single level, and more importantly, because I didn't want these games to end. And I plan on taking the exact same approach with Shadow Gambit, and as I work towards 100%ing Shadow Tactics and Desperados 3. Coming from me, that's about the biggest compliment I can give. And to any of the devs, if you all end up watching this for whatever reason, thank you so much for making these games, genuinely. I have had an insane amount of fun with them, and I have loved having them as part of my life, so thank you. Anywho, I think that about does it for me. Go play the demos, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I have a Discord server if you want to join that, I'm pretty active in there. Also, if you end up checking out these games, or if you've already played them, let me know what you thought of them in a comment down below. I always like reading and responding to comments, so I'd be interested to hear y'all's thoughts. Also, also, both of these games deserve their own proper video essays, which I will likely get around to doing at some point, probably after I 100% them, but we'll see. Regardless, I doubt this will be the last time I talk about Mimi Me on the channel. Anyway, I'll see y'all next time. Bye.